let's look now at another popular model uh, which models in continuous time discrete rates, discretely defined rates. Uh, the so-called forward LIBOR rate, it's called a BGM market model or just a market model. BGM are the initials of people who uh, first wrote about it. Remember the, the uh, definition of the LIBOR rate uh, and we have it here, the forward LIBOR rate. Uh, we have it here. If you invest one dollar today, and uh, actually not today, but you invest it at ti minus one, uh, then after time delta t, which is the difference between ti and ti minus one, uh, you would uh, have uh, the ratio p of t ti minus one over p of t ti. Okay, this is just uh, what we did a few slides ago, uh, the definition uh, of the forward rate, uh, but now we are calling it a LIBOR rate because it's going to be computed not as a continuously compounded rate, but it's going to be computed as a simple rate. Okay? So we, we define the interest as being simple interest, we just multiply the uh, invested amount by 1 plus delta t, the rate. Okay? It's called LIBOR rate for the rate which is used uh, for lending and borrowing between uh, banks on sh uh, in short term and uh <coughs> all right this is just a it's just a forward rate agreement forward rate investment uh, and the rate corresponding to that computed in the simple terms is called the LIBOR rate we call it L of TTI and if you if you compute L from here you get you get this expression for the LIBOR rate. And there are there are options written on the LIBOR rate, call and put options written on the li LIBOR rate, which we will talk about uh, in the next slide. And there are simple formulas, Black Scholes type formulas that uh, traders use for pricing those options, or at least for implying volatility when trading those options. And um, the question is, is there a theoretical model which can produce those formulas? Because those formulas, black scholes type formulas for uh, call and put options on the LIBOR rate, uh, have been used and had been used for a long time before ac actually the theory existed that would exactly say what uh, those, where those formulas come from. And this was the motivation uh, be behind the BGM market model. And that's what we are going to try to do. Can we somehow model the LIBOR rate so that the corresponding uh, formulas for the call and put options on the LIBOR rate will be of the Black-Scholes type? Well, if you, uh, if you look at the, uh, the LIBOR rate, uh, we want, uh, if we are going to price it, um, we are going to price it under probability denoted B P superscript Ti, uh, which is called Ti forward measure, uh, such that when you discount by the Ti bond, you get a martingale. Okay, we are going to talk uh, more about uh, discounting by uh, assets which are not the bank account in the next set of slides, and here is uh, an application of that. Uh, but okay, this is just a constant, so that's not a problem. But this one, uh, we we want to make it a martingale, uh, and um, it's like discounting the TI minus one bond with a TI bond, right? Instead of discounting by the bank account, we are discounting by the uh, by the TI bond. All right. So if we can do that, then. Uh, since it's a martingale under such probability, uh, there is some, it's going to be written as a stochastic integral. Uh, now this is really a theorem which is called the martingale representation theorem, which tells you that uh, we know that every stochastic integral is a martingale under technical conditions, but there is also a reverse statement which says that 
uh, every martingale in the Brownian motion models can be written as a stochastic integral. So there, there will exist a process gamma uh, such that uh, the LIBOR rate is a stochastic integral of that gamma. Uh, we can write it as L times gamma. Uh, DWTI, so Brownian motion under the probability TI, and that probability is called the TI forward measure. Okay. So Girsanov type theorems, uh, Girsanov theorem tells you that this is possible. There exists a probability such when you discount by the bond price, uh, you get, uh, uh, you can find a probability such that that's a martingale. And that's what we are doing here. We are discounting the TI minus 1 bond uh, by the TI bond. All right. So if you can do that, and again, Gibson's theorem tells you that you can do that, uh, then consider pricing a call option on the LIBOR rate. So it's called a caplet. It's a, it's a natural these uh, caplets and floorlets, which would be a put option, uh, they are natural things to trade in the market which is, uh, which is concerned with the rates. Uh, if you don't want to pay a higher rate than a fixed amount or you, uh, or you don't want to be receiving a rate uh, lower than a fixed amount, you put a cap or you put a floor uh, on your rate that you're paying or receiving, uh, you can do that by trading in caplets and floorlets. Uh, I'm just going to look at the caplets. So caplet is simply a call option on the LIBOR rate, positive part of the LIBOR rate minus the uh, some fixed rate, uh, which I call RC for uh, couplet rate. And um, it will be the case, and this is really coming from the next set of slides, uh, we will we will show that the value is given by the price of the uh, discount asset, and discount asset is the TI bond. We were discounting by TI, uh, and then expected value under that probability, which corresponds to this uh, discounting asset, uh, and then the value the value of the uh, of the payoff. Okay, so I don't have to do discounting here, like uh, under the usual pricing probability when you discount by the bank account, we would do discounting here. Instead of discounting here, I change the probability and, and I put the discounting asset here, the price of the discounted asset here. Okay. So, so we'll, we'll talk about it in the, in the next set of slides, uh, but if you trust me that this is correct, uh, then, really, what we are computing here is a black scholes type computation. Right? If you assume that gamma is deterministic, okay, if you assume that the gamma is, uh, is not random, then this is really uh, this computation here. Under that probability, this is computing the call option price of an asset which has deterministic volatility and the interest rate is zero, there is no discounting. And so we, we can simply use the black scholes formula for the call option with interest rate zero, and instead of sigma squared, we put the average of the volatility, uh, and the average of the volatility would be uh, one over the time, uh, time length of the interval, which is ti minus one minus t, and then integral from t to ti minus one, gamma squared of u, Ti du, we average overall use, overall times. Uh, we mentioned this uh, fact before, when you have deterministic volatility, uh, you just replace volatility squared by its, uh, by its, by its average. Mm, so that's, that comes from the theory before, and uh, that gives you the formula for the couplet price. It would be the price of the Ti bond today times the Black-Scholes price of an asset which has this for volatility, for volatility squared, and uh, the interest rate zero. And this is, this is the strike price. Okay. Uh, and this, is, this explains what the market is doing, what the traders in the market are doing when they use Black-Scholes formula for pricing couplets. 
Um, the volatility uh, is really the volatility of the live rate, uh, and uh, and that's why you can use the Black Scholes formula if you think in terms of uh, making the couplet a martingale under the probability under which when you discount by the Ti bond, uh, the Ti minus one bond becomes a martingale. Okay. It's a bit uh, abstract, but uh, it, re it reduces to something simple, relatively simple. It's, it's just another Black Scholes type formula uh, called Black Couplet formula. And then let me let me mention another thing, uh, which this explains uh, pricing couplets. There is there is another popular uh, fixed income derivative, which are swaptions, which is an option to enter a swap at a future time at the pre-specified rate, but, uh, and that can be also explained in these type of models, but not with the same model. So we actually don't have the same single model which explains uh, black scholes type formulas that traders use for pricing both couplets and swaptions. Okay, we don't have a model which uh, prices both using black scholes uh, at the same time. We, we have different models with which produce black scholes formula, for couplets and for swaptions, but those are different models. Okay, I'm not going to actually do pricing of swaptions in this course. Uh, there is something on that in the book uh, or different books. 